Okay guys, I am going to take Darren T's advice and I'm going to look into using a studio palette. Uh, how that works in concert with the um, with the color model, I'm going to have to discover. However, the more important objective on this shot is to race. I want to see how quickly I can do what I'm going to do. So, what first thing I do is, given the shot that I just did that has the correct post production set up and whatnot, I'm going to go ahead and leave everything in that I need in this scene or shot. Get rid of everything I don't. Okay, now, because I just dragged that uh, image in from the main um, storyboard, it's already set up with its palette. If we hit F3, let's see what happens here. Okay, everything's still set up. In the cast window, I'm going to go remove all unused levels. So now there's nothing left in my scene that is not germane to the current shot. Okay, this is a push in on Mel with a slight smile thing going on. Okay, this is shot 782. Gonna save the scene as 782. And now we're on the Mel palette tab. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a line fill. on our sketch because right now you can see that if I move the color around on the sketch color nothing happens so we're gonna make sure we convert all of these lines uh, and actually I'm gonna do lines in areas well no I can't do lines in areas because that'll actually fill the fill the areas in so okay fine um, I wonder, let me try something here. I'm going to take the eraser, which is not in selective mode. Okay, I'm going to do something a little risky here. Uh, which is, I'm going to select everything, cut it to the clipboard, take the eraser, erase everything, hit the S key, paste it back in. Okay, so now I know for a fact that this shot is completely clean. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is center Mel. Okay, we are probably going to use the plastic tool for the change in expression, but honestly, all it's going to require is a little bit of a tweak to the eyebrows and his mouth. So with that, let's grab our ink and B key and let's rock and roll here all this stuff's going to be the same with both expressions okay we got a little bit of an issue there I'm just going to grab this And actually, let's tighten it up this way. And pull that curvature back out a bit. Okay, that's fine. Erase that. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Okay, we got a little bit there. Okay, little indication of the nose. I'm just going to go ahead and color that in. OK, 
Okay. No good. Let's flip it. It's just hard to do as a right-handed person. Let's zip out. Okay, not bad, not bad. Not perfect though. So, let's just let's just adjust it a bit. Okay, it's not round enough, so therefore I'm going to go ahead and hit Z key and redraw it. Um why don't we do it this way? Let's cheat. As long as we're cheating, let's cheat. Pull this down here. So again, the, the objective with this shot is simply to go fast. We have a palette that works. Not trying to be overly creative on this shot. Just trying to do what's effective. Hello? Okay, a little bit of a rotation here. Okay. And by the way, uh, I don't know, your mileage may vary, but one thing I have noticed is that Open Tunes 1.4, the, uh, for me, on Tunes raster levels, the Polyline tool uh, basically does not work at all. I mention that because I would love to be able to take a polyline and go boom, 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 enter, nothing happens. I have no idea why, haven't really spent a lot of time looking into it, but it's a drag. Because there are times when the polyline tool is, by gum, the right tool for the job. Okay. Just erase that. I'm going to go ahead and flip the canvas again. And then let's zip out and see how we're doing on balance. Well, not too bad actually. I'm going to go ahead and grab this stuff. And that looks much more balanced. Okay. Uh, I think maybe a little bit of a skew that way would be good, which does suggest that maybe down here. There's going to be actually a little bit we need to fix. So let's just go ahead and fix that. Done. Okay. All right. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a selective erase. So let's hit the eraser. Let's turn on selective. I just select the sketch color. So therefore, I can clean up this area and make it ready for painting. Okay. So we're good. Uh, let's go into normal mode. And we're coloring. Sorry, not lines, but skin hair, eyes, headband, and I guess we would use the hair color for the... Okay. So the only thing I've really kind of fouled up here is I kind of sort of forgot to draw the poor guy's body. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and get it in there. All right, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to the palette and look at my color model. This is kind of important. Okay, this is the outfit. Um, actually, I'm confused. I'm thinking that this is what he wears early in the show, and this is what he's wearing later in the show. Nice garment. Casual garment. Nice garment. Um... I'm almost sure that this is later in the show. So early in the show when he's like doing his homework and all that kind of stuff, he's wearing this. This is what he's wearing when he hits the road. Uh, so let's just go ahead and go with that. And by the way, make sure I'm... Okay, yeah, I'm still in the right color, so... Um, that's interesting. Did we lose our... Ah, it seems like we lost our pressure sensitivity again. Okay, that might be because of the brush, actually. Um, I'm not going to worry about it at the moment. Short explanation is that the ink brush specifically has pressure sensitivity turned off in the brush settings. And maybe when I was monkeying with my palette and stuff, 
it could be that I inadvertently you know made a copy of the brush that uh, the ink brush for my sketch brush and as a result I've got a sketch brush that doesn't have pressure sensitivity it could be okay all right let's flip it and see if we're okay on our basic dimensionality and I would say we're okay but we're not quite right there we go that feels pretty good other than actually I have to say all in all that whole thing feels a little off to me so let's go here round his shoulders a little bit more and yes that's better okay so now we can go back to our ink We'll check for gaps here shortly. But the goal right now, that last line didn't work. The goal right now is to simply get him in here, inked and colored. And then we'll deal with the animation, which is that we're gonna make mod we're gonna make mods to this based on what we see in this sketch here. That's pretty much the plan. Okay, so now let's go here and let's do a selective erase of the lines and areas. Very good. And we can see a little bit of an issue here. Uh, let's turn it off selective so we make sure we get rid of everything. B key. I'm going to go like that and then patch it because I really wanted to move his neck position slightly okay so I see a little bit of glitchy poo here so let's just go ahead and fix those boom 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 okay that looks pretty good um, skin fill it and nice garment boom boom trim boom uh, we'll use this for the shadow there, I think. And skin. Boom. Boom. Okay. So the question of shadows obviously comes up. And let's see here. It looks like we don't really have a, um, uh, a pupil color, which obviously would be black. So let's just go Control C, Control V. Um, eventually. Mel is going to need um, some irises. Gosh, in this case, you know, I think we should do it. Let's just do it. Control C, Control V. The reason I didn't do it earlier is because um, when I did the the model sheet, I I was using a really wide uh, angle on these guys and. So we just didn't see the eye detail. I'm going to mm, let's we'll outline them and then decide if in fact we regret that decision. It could be that perhaps it would be better to um, actually have the eyes be um, outlined with just a darker shade of the eye color. But now I want to say Mel is probably the character that has the closest to baby blue eyes. Those look pretty saturated. Let's back up a little bit here. I think that looks pretty good. Darker maybe? Um, I'm gonna go with that and that's the eye color not the specular I'm gonna um, do I dare go with color zero for the specular uh, based on what's going on here the I'm gonna put this at 10 the specular would be kinda pronounced I'm thinking just because of the emotional content of the current situation okay now it's pretty obvious that we're going to need shadows 
and I think that we should put them on a separate separate layer and actually have two two uh, levels of shadowing that we do okay so therefore let's save our work okay cut this okay so bit of a problem we do need to save hello okay let's just to be safe what we want to do is save the level so let's save the level and overwrite the palette and then I'm just gonna for completeness go ahead and save the palette as drawings um, list view is a little better for this we're gonna save that and then we're gonna actually reload the color model and unfortunately the path seems to have gone the way of the buffalo that's alright overwrite it and we see that we do have his pupils and iris and everything is now in the color model as it should be so that's good okay so we don't have a background um this is on so in fact this is the actual colors that we should be dealing with and now what we want to do is the following let's uh go here and we actually need to do this in the um in the actual level okay control C control V I'm gonna move this over here okay um, control C control V so again all I'm doing here is what I did before which is cut my character into pieces just so that I can okay and by the way yeah color zero just bit me in the butt I didn't realize it okay so let's go here um okay that's kinda weird so here oh I see so the level itself uh, let's load the color model boom and here I just want to look okay so I guess I guess I I should know this folks but apparently color zero doesn't really let you um, make any changes because essentially color zero is actually for transparency the whole idea is to cut a piece out so actually I think that's what I did so call me an idiot Mel I'm just gonna just for completeness I'm gonna go ahead and put in a specular which is actually obviously true white now what I'm thinking is if I hit the fill tool and I'm filling areas let's let's make this specular red normal areas and it doesn't seem to want to work so therefore I need to go boom boom like so okay then change it to white all right so there's my specular over here just to be safe and complete do the same thing again okay and now I'm gonna save my level and I tell it to overwrite the palette and I really need to get the whole studio palette thing going but for now we're just gonna overwrite the palette and reload the color model since we changed the palette just to be safe and everything looks good okay <clears throat> so why did we do that well what we're gonna do is first of all we're gonna slightly mod this to just be um, actually let's do it like this let's put in two of these so we're gonna put this here and we're gonna put it down here as well and what I'm going to do is stretch this like that. This one, you know, and remember, we can always discard these if it doesn't work. Just a slight growth there. Um, and I'm going to 
grab that color. Okay, okay. Um, Z, and, and you see what it just did there? It failed to undo this, and when I hit undo the second time, what it did was it undid the modification of this. So I've said it before, but I'll say it again. When it comes to anything that involves color, anything, proceed at your own risk in the sense that if you make a mistake, the undo is highly likely to not work. Wish it weren't true, but it's completely true. Really, really unreliable. Okay, so now let's sample this and OpenTunes is confused. That's not good. What if I sample this? Okay, so uh, this is bad news, people. This means that OpenTunes is majorly confused. So the value here is 32. So I'm going to copy that. Watch what happens. Okay. I'm now I'm really confused because it seems that the reference to the correct palette entry color is um is working fine, but when I sample the palette, not sampling the color, I'm sampling the palette. Here I grab the skin, but here, nothing. Okay? Okay. And if I grab it here, now it only wants to give me the skin. So what I'm going to do is, for now, I'm just going to... I don't know what the reason would be, and I'm not going to belabor it. I'm just going to go like this. and then we're going to be stretching it as well. Okay, so now we know what our expressions are going to be basically. So with that, we're going to erase. Um, we're not going to do selective. We're just going to erase everything here related to the drawing. I've got Mel pretty well centered up on the frame, so that's good. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the plastic tool, create a mesh. Um, that's a little dense since all we're doing is moving things around so let's go ahead and create our mesh and now what we're going to do is we're going to one two three one this one's going to be a little more important because we're actually going to be stretching his mouth the rest of the stuff we're not going to be stretching we're just essentially using the plastic tool as a controller to just move things around You'll see what I mean by that shortly. Okay, these need to be able to rotate, and I would say to potentially also be um, stretch. So we'll go like that, so we can just sort of have it be somewhat intuitive. Mm-hmm. Okay. Animate. Okay, so let's save our work. Save all. I don't know. I've been changing colors here and there, I think. Um, I better be... I better save the level first. Now I'll save all. And presumably that will work. By the way, one thing I did notice is that when you've got large assets going on like this um, storyboard, which is just under half a gigabyte in size, so 480 megabytes, something like that. When OpenTunes is really, really slow to save your work for you, Especially if autosave kicks in. and But in any case, when you hit save and then all of a sudden you're having to wait a lot longer than you think, you should have to. The reason is actually because of the backup system. What I found was that when I turned off in my preferences, um, and you might think this is dangerous, but uh, where is it? Uh, general. Not, I turned save automatically off. And where is the backup? backup scene this right here that option I turn it off because I I constantly back up all my stuff um, you know myself so anyway let's go ahead and set a key boom okay so now the there's a key there and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, from what I recall the um, actually let's go back here my bad 
I just made a kind of a stupid mistake. On the initial frame, we need to get these get these guys out of the out of the picture. <laughs> so that was a little bit silly, wasn't it? Okay. Now here, again, a little bit stupid of of me, but this can go out. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn off keep distance. And we're going to essentially replace the first eyes with these other eyes. So it's a little bit of a persnickety operation because you sort of have to eyeball. <laughs> Get it? Eyeball where things go. But let's just see. Okay, not too bad. Only going to say that this probably should go that way a little bit. So, mm, didn't quite get it. Yep, that looks good. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and put these eyebrows here like that at this point maybe stretch that one a tiny bit but then I'm gonna put the mouth here like that okay and then I'm gonna add a, a third key like so and uh, I guess as long as we're kind of taking this to extremes, I can't, I don't want to get it too much of a change. However, this, I need to whip over here and put these. Okay, so now I'll just assume I got it right. And I didn't. So let's go back. Okay, so it's actually a little concerning the That looks pretty good, actually. That looks pretty good. Let's see. Nope. One, two, three. Okay, so the third one didn't work, in my opinion. So I'm going to just delete that key, go back here, and I think we'll leave his eyes alone. I think, I think that's really what's causing harm. Ah, shoot, that's not what I meant to do. Let's go back down here. So let's just kind of go a little bit up with the eyebrows. We can't go up very far because we will see the old eyebrows underneath. But here we could go like this. And that's that. Okay. Okay. And we may have the same situation we had on the other s shot where, um, nope, here I think it works. Yep, that works. So now what we want to do is we are going to have a camera push. So let's go ahead and let's go back to basics here. And let's, let's have this change in expression take a second. So... Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this drawing here and make a little correction because I can see that I was a little sloppy on his mouth. I'm going to go ahead and flip this. 
this sort of See, I wonder if this will work now. Nope. Okay. I can only I can only assume it's got something to do with the fact that uh, it's a my paintbrush, or the fact that it's all um, brush as opposed to paintbrush. You know, that's what I'm thinking. So file, save all. Okay. So now I'm gonna while I'm kind of here and in the mood, I'm going to go ahead and insert a uh, raster level. And I'm going to go to my raster brushes, actually my pencil, and I'm just going to go ahead and give myself a blue liner and sketch. Okay, because what's going on here is this is the other side of that cave so actually I think something like that so essentially we're kind of a little bit of an, a looking up angle this would be stars in the distance and a little bit of a cliff face kind of situation like that that's really about it so behind him I'm going to say we can, let's just rock and roll here with a big brush, get this baby blocked in, okay, we just want to get some sense of the darkness, because that is a cave after all, mm. so we'll just keep it rough, keep it loose, give it a little bit of sense of texture, and in the back, we're going to have you know, again, I, I am obviously <clears throat> once again baking the sky into the picture to a degree. Let's go around here to some greenery. Okay, so what we've got here is little bit of tree action in the foreground um, okay cliff faces here are gonna be <clears throat> kinda sorta like this except probably a little lighter so let's just go ahead and uh, get that in there I would say a little less saturated and a little lighter. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to fix that here in half a second. Y you don't want these sort of rounded off edges. They look stupid and not, not real at all. Okay, so in terms of blocking in, not too horrible. Um, not really feeling it. The uh, color here. But this is actually a great example of where how color can fool you, you know. Because okay, so now I'm gonna get the brush back down to size. Sorry. And let's go ahead and save everything. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Those edges. Um, Nice crisp edges here. All right, <coughs> same thing here. That rocky cliff face. Okay, <coughs> planes, planes, and more planes. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is grab this brush, and I'm gonna sample that color, and now I'm gonna go ahead and sketch in some detail. Okay. This is a cliff face kind of concept. I'm going to go ahead and 
see if that looks interesting having the little bit of a crack right there. Eh, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. <clears throat> Trying to just capture what I'm seeing in my mind. And I see one boulder right there. Boulder. Alright, let's grab this. So we'll actually have a little bit of foliage. A little bit of foliage. And I think that for the most part, we're going to keep this this little section right here as a without too much detail all right so here we might just sneak in a little bit of something but okay so now again we want to move quick so let's go zero um, for now we'll keep the brush on the bold side okay and get a little bit of shadow action going on here at this sort of lip And actually, that doesn't really look very good because it's it's supposed to be rocky. So let me just go ahead and delineate a little bit of shadow area. Uh, that looks better. A little bit of shadow area here. That's fine. This doesn't have to be perfect. The idea is actually to avoid getting into too much detail. So boom. And now I'm just going to, mm, yep, there you go. That's it. Just a touch, just a touch. Okay, back here, I'm feeling a little bit more yellow and it doesn't quite work. That's all right. Um, let's get back to this. Wow, that's really red. Okay. Is this on? Sorry. That's not on either. Okay, so that's cool. So, what we really want to do is just grab this. Sorry, wrong level. Let's get back here. Grab that. And just bring it up a tiny bit. buying it I'm having a hard time finding the correct level of contrast here so bear with me <clears throat> okay that's gonna be shadowed underneath and let's see what happens if we go like that okay okay um, I'm gonna keep that actually I'm gonna put this back to minus one and now we're gonna actually work into that. The one caveat being that we need to um, make sure the top is a highlight, not a shadow. Obviously, it kind of looks stupid and doesn't make any sense for that to be. Uh, darker. Okay, that's cool. That's working. That's working. Let's darken it a little bit. Okay. Planes of tone. Planes of tone. Here's that boulder I was talking about. That boulder needs to be a little bit <laughs> bolder in terms of its shadow. Ah, oh, criminy. And that's going to pick up a little bit of a highlight. Boom. Um, that was too much. Come on, open tunes. Don't be screwing up your undo again. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Boom. Boom, let's flip it. Not bad, not bad. Get these up here. Well, it's fun to create the rocks. Fun to create the rocks. Mm, let's put
put a plane right there. And then let's give it some dimensionality. Okay, I'm, I think I'm going to quit with that. What I am going to do is grab this and put a little bit of cracks in the rock. A little bit of cracks. I like that. Okay, grab this. Let's go back to our big brush. All right, so now what I want to do is tilt this more towards. Yeah, that's fine. Let's make the brush a little bigger, though. A little more towards lighter. Okay, because we actually do have the moon way the heck up here in the corner where you can't see it. And just trying to find the right tonality here for the sky. That's actually not too bad. So let's just go ahead and run with that. We don't have to worry about Mel because obviously he is in the foreground. Okay. Let's just do a little bit of a blendy poo here. And I think yeah. Let's just kind of hint at some highlights. So basically the the tonality of the blue I had chosen really wasn't quite right. So that's okay. We'll just chisel that out of there. Okay. Now we need to work a little bit more of this darkness down a little further. Off in the distance kind of thing. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Let's just keep rocking with the... Keeping it real impressionistic. Real impressionistic. Need a little smaller brush. Picking up lots of shadow. Lots of shadow. Okay. That's good. Actually, mm, let me go back here. I get that. So, letting that blend in a little bit. <clears throat> now we're going to. Up too much, darn. It almost wants to feel like daytime. <clears throat> Jeez, guys, I'm thinking I'm done with the background. Um, little bit of an issue right here behind Mel, where apparently I didn't fill it in well enough. If we take him out, well, obviously you can see what the issue is. We can fix that quite readily. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, a little bit of texture around here. A little texture. I want to move fast. I want to keep it loose. If you understand the dimensionality of what you're trying to draw, you understand the, the planes. We're not looking for round. My, my sense is that, you know what? In human manufacturing, that's when you get stuff that's nice and round. In the real world, everything wants to resolve mostly to, to planes. Yep, see like that. Just catch catch that lip. Catch that edge. Boom boom boom. Okay, let's turn Mel back on. Okay, fine. I think that looks pretty good. Do we want to indulge ourselves with maybe one little cloud in the background? How would that look? That would be like this. It 
It's going to catch the light of the moon. And then it's going to have a little bit of shadow underneath. Up at the top. Not quite enough there. Problem with that a little bit might be it's might be fighting Mel's hair a little bit. So I'm gonna grab this and just allow myself a little tiny bit more, little tiny bit, just a little bit of noise. I, and and it makes sense in a way because we're at a point in the story here where a little bit of cloud in the sky sort of says something to the audience about the gravity of the situation going forward. So, a little bit of noise in the sky is not a bad thing at this point. Alright, so what's missing? Well, we got to stretch this down to the bottom of the shot, but also what's missing is the um, the shadows. The shadows on Mel. Okay, so I'm going to just give myself a shadow layer. Boom. And it's going to be simple. Uh, <laughs> I say it's going to be simple it's going to be kind of simple. All right, so I'm just going to use that default color and I'm just going to fill that in. Okay, and then what we're going to do is create a second color. It's going to be a little denser. Okay, and I think I'll just use the, yeah, I'll just use this. Use the paintbrush. And then what I'm doing is I'm just going to go ahead and give some of this area a little extra shadow little extra shadow. Right? Looks good. We don't want to get too crazy with it. We don't want to get too crazy with it. Um, go with this. think. Does that work? Yeah, I think that works. Just trying to feel it. Okay. How are we doing on time? 48 minutes. Okay. I wanted to keep it under an hour if I could. The, the idea is to say, hey, once we get in the groove here and get our workflow figured out, can we generally crank out a shot in an hour? If we can, that would probably be a good thing. All right. Um. So now what I want to do is add a little bit extra there and do I want to do this? No. I don't want to do that. That's getting into like the anime I was working on. That would be appropriate there. For this show, I just don't think so. We gotta be careful not to get over crazy with our shading and shadows and blah blah blah. Okay, there's the shot. Let's turn on the um, camera and in fact by the way, file save all. Okay. We do have a camera move, so let's go ahead and put the shadow over the entire shot. Do our camera move. We don't have a lot of time to do the camera move. But let's go to the camera. Let's look at its position. And if we pull out, you can see what happens. So I am not going to deal with parallax yet. I'm going to go all the way down here. And that's it. Let's see if that move worked. Yes, that's very appropriate. Okay, so now what we want to do is go back up to the top. And we're going to um, take the background painting and we're going to move it way back and 
then we're going to scale it back up like so. And that should give us some nice parallax. Let's see if it worked. Yep. Frankly, I would say not enough. I would say not enough. So I'm going to scoot this up. I'm going to really take this to an extreme and see see how it feels because basically what I want to have happen is I want Mel to I want to feel the camera pushing in on Mel and I don't really want to see too much action on the background at all that's perfect that's it guys shot done that's it file save all that took 51 minutes as you guys know there will be